Hey, hey, hey. This video is about the basic information when it comes to inference for the regression line. So, let's get this party started. So, first of all, we, on chapter three, we did everything with samples, and now we're looking at our samples compared to that of the entire population. So as you cross that out, because I did a boo-boo, um, a sample regression line comes from um, a random sample or SRS, given sample size n. Remember baby n because it's a sample. And yeah, that looks familiar. Again, just remember whatever the coefficient of x is, is the slope. When it's the population regression, all of a sudden they have lost their doggone mind. I guess it's the big people, the big table, we go Greek. Okay? So, in which now here is your slope, beta, and here is your um, y-intercept, your alpha. So, as we look at all of this stuff that's necessary, yes, we're choosing from an SRS, and um, the population is your n size. Here's the equation that I mentioned before, where y hat is the predicted y, which means that's your response. Remember, you need to know that. Y is your response. And that B is the regression um, from the sample. And as we've done before, with all of this, we are trying to find sampling distribution. So, remember, here's one sample. And let's say... that we are looking for, um, we have information about the price of drones. Yeah, it's weird, but that's the only thing I can think of right now. So this is one sample. So, so let's say in one year, we notice that, of course, it's a very basic drone, and as the um, functions of the drones increase, so does the price. It's really a steep price drones renew. Then right here, again, we have, so that was for one year, so that's one sample. Then let's say it's the second year the drones are out. It's the same thing as our, as the functions of the drones increase, so does the price, but you notice the slope is not quite as steep as it was, because it's, drones are it's still kind of new, but we're like, okay, we'll keep the price down a little. And now let's look at this, um, this last one. Again, this is the third year. So here, as we're looking at our drones here, again, as, our, um, as the capacity or the functionality of the drones increase, of course the price is going to increase. So we got positive slopes going on in all of these. Okay, but you notice it's not quite as steep. But um, because this is the third year for drones, okay, everybody's got a drone. My drone can do what your drone does. And, they're not, and we're not willing to pay as much as we did when they came out for the first time. Here are the samples, samples one, two, three, year one, year two, or year three. But the population, the population is the big picture, what the company um, expected the price of the drones to be. As we have more values of X, which means as we have more functionality on the drones, that means that our price is going to go up. But this is the key. One, two, three are your sampling distributions. We've done that before. And here's your population. So I just wanted to clarify it that when we take the average of these three years in the future, in a future video, we take the average of three of the distribution, and then we are going to compare that to that of the po population and see if there's a, um, a statistical significance. I hear hypothesis tests coming around the pike. Okay, now we have this. Let's look at the standard deviation. Ah, standard deviation looks familiar here. Oh, what's sub B? What's that about? Well, it's about the sample of the, what's the word? Yep, pop of the, of the slope. And here is the ugly formula that, quite honestly, we don't have to worry about. So, and remember, just like in the past, if we have our, if the 10% rule is applicable, then we can use this standard deviation. And let's remind ourselves, just like in the past, the um, sampling stamp, um, um, distribution has got to be approximately normal. But what are we looking to be approximately normal in this case? Oh, we're looking for your output, your response variable, your y values to be approximately normal. 
what do we want to talk about next? What are the three factors that affect the standard deviation? Well, I don't think anything has changed. Um, let's talk about the basic one. As your sample size increases, your variability decreases. Well, we know that. Here, let's go up. We have our standard deviation of the variable x of the explanatory. And here, as that increases your, as the standard deviation of your variable x increases, your standard deviation for the slope decreases. So they're saying here, as this becomes, um, as this moves around a little bit more, your values for the slope are going to um, get closer together. Now, the best way that I can explain that is if I have this, and here's your values of x, here's a 1, 2, 3, 4, you know those numbers aren't relevant at all, okay, and I have this, and I have one here, I have one here, I have one there, well, well look at my slope, but if they're closer together, doesn't that mean that the slope of the line will, and of course I have to have, to have something going on there, but as they get closer together, doesn't that mean that slope of the line is going to get, um, going to go down in value? It's not going to be quite as steep. That's the way I see it. Okay. But again, this is a multiple choice, and all these are multiple choice questions waiting to happen. The basic idea of how this relates to Pat previous um, um, standard um, standard deviations, how it relates to things in the past. Variability is always, it's always about variability. How does um, a sampling distribution from the past relate to this? Now we've got a group of a bunch of lines and we're looking at the overall, um, comparing it to the overall population. And the idea of old school stuff, old school stuff means looking at what we had before sample regression, and then the new stuff right here, population regression. So, all of this, multiple choice questions waiting to happen, but at the same time, the overall idea of the old with the new. Now, what are the conditions and assumptions? These are a pain in the butt, and thank God the majority of the time they give it to us. Okay? Here, linearity. Well, for every y, so the bottom line is the thing has to be linear, because if it's not linear, how are we going to use a linear regression to potentially make a prediction if the thing's not linear in the first place? 10% rule. Well, same thing as it's been before. Observations are independent of each other. Also adding that, because you know how we've kind of we've conjoined the 10% and the independence as things have gone on. So remember, there, the, the idea of independence also says there's no replacement. So if we take something out, we shouldn't take anything out. That's the way you say it. Standard deviation. Now, here, well, I want to talk about the third one. Randomness. We know that. Random sample, random experiment. That's not new. What is new here um, is basically are these two things, because I didn't, yeah, the linearity just makes sense even though it's new. Standard deviations have to be equal. Okay, what's that about? Now remember, standard deviation of standard error is the same. So as, I'm, as I draw a line right here, and they're saying that standard deviation of y. So here's a value of y because we're measuring up high. Here's another value of y. Again, y is measuring the um, vertical distance. Here's another value of y, again, measuring the vertical distance. Notice I'm not paying attention to x, y. Standard deviation is not asking us about your input. It's asking about your output. And if you think about it, it makes sense. So it says it's the same for all values of y. So what they're saying is that the standard deviation is going to be approximately the same. Well, why is that important? Because if it's not approximately the same, it's not going to be a good linear model to use in the first place. Because if I have something like this, and something like this, and something like that, is this truly a good linear model to make a um, prediction? So with the way I look at it, these two things, both new, both confusing, especially the, this one, 
go hand in hand because if they're not approximately the same for all values of x, that means this line, it won't be a tight line like this. Distance, 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 distance. Oh, now all of a sudden, would that line work for this? The answer is no. Okay? So, that's the reason behind it. Now, that previous um, thing I just spoke about is tough. It's tough. But again, don't sweat it. If you don't quite understand it, it will not affect you on a free response at all, and it will not affect you on the AP test. I haven't even seen one of those problems on a um, multiple choice or a free response in prior tests, prior years. But it does go consistent with the idea of residuals, because isn't that the distance of the residual we have going on right here? And the answer is, yeah, it is. But isn't standard deviation, standard error, residual, isn't residual all about an error? So the answer is yes, yes, and yes. Now, that's the background. As we do this information, the whole rationale behind revisiting this is because we're about to do inference analysis. So, what are the steps? Determine the unknown parameter. So in other words, we need to determine your beta. Okay? Remember here that the slope of the sample, the sample slope, is an unbiased estimator. Okay? What does unbiased estimator mean? Well, it's the same as what it meant in the past, because in the past it meant that we could use this to estimate the population. In the past, we used the idea of the bullseye, and everything, us being, an us being an amazing shot and all, would land right in the bullseye. Because remember, this was unbiased, and also it had low variability. Okay, not a lot of scattering. Here, this right here is biased, even though it had low variability, because the whole point is we're trying to hit center mass. We're trying to hit the middle, okay? And what's the difference between what we did before and what we're doing now? We're talking about slopes. So our slopes have got to hit center mass, the, the center of the, um, the bullseye, So, remember, as we reflect from the past, okay, and these, but now we're talking about slopes. All those slopes hit the bullseye, and if they hit the bullseye right there, that means here that the slopes of those samples is going to be approximately the same as the slope of the population. Here is unbiased. I mean, it is biased, excuse me. So that means it's a problem. We're not hit, hitting the, on the bullseye. But with that being said, in both cases, there's not a lot of scatteredness, so we have low variability. So that means we still would have a low standard deviation for both of them. Just reminding you of how this works with and comparing it to the other stuff. Okay? As you can see here, I mentioned um, B slope of the sample, and here's my Greek. Now here I'm at the bottom of page four. What we just did was conceptually really hard, very, very hard concepts. But what we're about to do now is substantially easier, well, in my humble opinion. Okay, generic formula. Oh, my gosh, how many times do we see this over and over again? Statistic plus or minus the critical value times the standard deviation of the statistic. Where is it? Where is it? Where is it? On our yellow? Oh, yeah, right there. Deja vu. Okay, let's go to the next page and see what's happening. Now, everything that we just did was the background was, what well, was the background, the basic ideology of inference for a linear regression. And remember, confidence interval is a type of inference. So, here is our new equation. The slope of the sample plus or minus the um, T star. Yes, so we're going back to the teacher's fusion times the standard error of the slope. 
oh my gosh, the standard error of the slope. Are we going to have to utilize this ugly formula coming around the pipe? And it has the nerve enough not to be on our formula sheet? Nah, we ain't got to worry about it. Okay. Here, this is on the formula sheet, standard error of the slope. So here's a second one that is on our formula sheet that I have never used at all. Maybe they'll use that in stats too. Who knows? And here... Yes, there is a function in our calculator, and I'm going to show it to you really quickly. And we'll see, we'll do one. We may or may not, we'll see. Okay, so here we can look over here, go down. Ah, but wait a minute, they want an L1 and L2, so that means I've got to have raw data. Okay, so exactly why we're not going to be using this, because we're going to be using a table. Okay, and which takes me to problem number six, and I don't plan on doing this whole thing, I just plan on highlighting a few things. From the past, remember, yes, that is your slope, yes, that is your y-intercept, and yes, this is the standard error, standard deviation of the residual line. Standard deviation, standard error of the regression line. Here is your standard error for your slope. Why am I mentioning those? Here's your slope. Here's your standard error of that slope. Yeah, we got to figure out what T star is. We use the chart. I want to show you something really quickly. Right there. That T ratio, that is your test statistic. And right there, there is your p-value. You never know when you might need something like that on an upcoming quiz. TTFN, ta-ta for now.